Now Habersham is proud to sponsor interviews with the candidates for the May 24th political primaries. We hope by viewing these personal interviews, you'll get to know the candidates who will be making decisions that impact your life, your family, and your livelihood here at the local and state level in Georgia. We hope you'll vote May 24th, and we hope you'll be more informed in that process by hearing from the candidates themselves in these one-on-one -on -one interviews sponsored by Now Habersham. This is Now Habersham, and today we're speaking with Joan Jones, a candidate for Clerk of Superior Court. Welcome, Joan. Thank you. Glad to have you with us. Let's talk just a little bit about formal education uh, you've had in your lifetime that has prepared you for a position as uh, the Clerk of Superior Court. Can you tell us a little bit about that? I can. I'm, I have been certified with the Carl Vinson Institute with the University of Georgia. I have continuing ed through the University of Georgia. I have paralegal training. I have 27 years of experience. Uh, what about uh, training or experiences you've had along the way, either your positions, your career, uh, that, that have prepared you to be the clerk? Okay. I have uh, worked uh, with Ernest W. Nations. He was a very good mentor to me. I worked side by side with him. Uh, I learned everything. I give credit to him. I wouldn't be where I'm at today if it wasn't for him. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I've, I've worked in the courtroom. I have been side by side with many, many judges. Uh, I have uh, worked with families. I have worked with children. I uh, have been a coordinator for uh, the citizen panel review, which is that is to help the judge and also to be able to help defects. I have, I have that training also. I've been the coordinator and that's for Habersham and Stevens. And I felt, you know, that if I can do uh, work with two counties courts at the same time, I can, I can work with one county court. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've had the uh, ability and knowledge to work one-on-one -on -one with, uh, you know, mentors. And I say my 27 years of experience it should get me where I need to be. I see. Now, uh, I attended the political forum uh, a few days ago, sponsored by the Chamber of Commerce and the Farm Bureau. And you uh, felt passionate about a number of issues. Uh, and so uh, tell us, share with the audience now, what do you think are some of the challenges uh, in the, uh, the clerk's office? Well, I believe that the individuals that work there need to be very dedicated to the people. Those people help pay your salary. Uh, I believe they need to be cross-trained. I believe that uh, there needs to be uh, I would say uh, more to dedication to the people. What, uh, you know, I believe that uh, we need to be more passionate because the individuals that come in, that we need to give them the utmost service, strong service. They are the ones that help pay your salary. You brought up an issue about charging fees for passport. Yes, sir. Um, I sat in the audience and I wasn't clear about what that issue was about. I've traveled to 40 countries over the planet in my lifetime and I'm now on my right. fourth passport. <laughs> right. I've always just gone to the post office or mailed it in. Right. I don't quite, and I'm, I think there are probably some viewers uh, here today and also people who were sitting in the audience uh, the other night did not understand uh, what you were speaking about. So maybe you could explain okay. that a little bit to the viewers. There is a $25 process fee. At the clerk's office. At the clerk's office. Mm -hmm. That $25 processing fee is personally gained by the clerk of Superior Court. I believe... Okay, you're saying the, uh, the current system, and, and frankly, I'm ignorant of this, so I don't know if this is something that goes back three, four, no. five... This is something that's been going on ever since... Uh, my opponent mm -hmm. has been in office. Okay. Um, so tell me about this processing fee because when you go, say, to the post office or you mail it in, you just pay the renewal fee. Right. You, well, uh, you know, when you first get uh, the uh, passport, 
that $25 processing is included at the post office. Mm -hmm. That goes to the po post office, but it doesn't really? go to the postman. You are postman. teaching me because I did not know that. Right. This does not go to the postmaster or anyone I that see. works there. Mm -hmm. uh, if it's processed through the clerk of a superior court, then it uh, it's processed there. He gets a $25 processing fee for personal gain. I will not take the $25 for personal gain. I believe that needs to go to the county coffer. And you see, if you're using county facility, a county paid employee to make you a profit of $25, uh, I will not do that. The processing is not wrong. There, there is, a, you know, there is a right to do that, but the way you process it is what's wrong. What else do you see? What are some other changes you might make or problems or challenges uh, that because you, you've you worked in the judicial system in Haversham County f for quite a while. Yes, 27 years. 27 years. So what else? You're probably familiar with things you might improve. What would they be? Well, one thing, you have to be a strong coordinator. You have to be able to coordinate with the judges, prosecutors, uh, parties. And you have to work closely to make sure that you are not subpoenaed many, many times because that is a waste of taxpayers' money. Uh, you know, I am going to be a steward of the taxpayers' money. I will be protecting people's money because it is hard-earned money. And, you know, that is one of the things, you know, doing subpoenas so many times, officers sitting there that has worked all night sitting there all day long and then having to go back to work again, that is a safety issue. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you a question. What about um, uh, the issue that was brought up the other night about the, and this isn't directly related to the clerk, but it is related to the layout of the courthouse and the functionality of the courthouse. Uh, and it was a little odd, but it did seem like there's a lot of interest in where the probate uh, court office is located in the basement and the furthest step away you could possibly take from the elevator, uh, passing lots of other offices along right. the way. Do you have any thoughts about the layout of the people you would work with the probate court? Well, I do work with the probate court. Sometimes I have, they transfer cases to me. Mm -hmm. Probate court is just right down the hall from me. Uh, I know it's an issue because there's a lot of people that are handicapped. There are older people that have a hard time there. And so it does need to be in an area that's more sufficient for the people. Mm -hmm. It is a big problem. Are you registered to vote? Yeah. Oh, of course. <laughs> Definitely. I've noticed, uh, I lived here 27 years too, so I guess you started at the courthouse and my family moved here at the same time. Um, I have noticed as a journalism professor and just a, uh, also a debate coach uh, up at Young Harris and other places that we tend to have, we tend to allow to some extent in Georgia, um, state representatives, state senators, and perhaps others uh, to have sidelines or business jobs that in fact are made better or more profitable by decisions that people make in their offices, which just astounds me in Georgia that that's okay to do. Um, you know, we have attorneys who operate as if they're a lobbyist representing large corporations and then going into the chambers and sponsoring bills that profit their, uh, their constituents uh, that they represent. So let me just ask you, as I've asked everybody else, do you own an outside business that somehow no, you would profit from by being the clerk? No, sir. I will be fully dedicated to the people. I've always been. I've been loyal to the people. I have a very big passion for the people. I enjoy being for the people. I am not a politician. I'm a servant. And it's called public servant. Yes. Okay, one final question for you. Uh, if you're elected to this position, uh, how will Habersham County be better with Joan Jones in the position of clerk of Superior Court? How will we, how will we be a better community? Well, I am going to work very hard, be very dedicated, be uh, I, my experience, strong leadership. Uh, I believe that we need strong leadership. Uh, I believe that the a public needs to be uh, respected and strongly respected and treat people like you want to be treated.
great. We've been speaking with Joan Jones, candidate for clerk of Superior Court. Good luck, Joan. Thank you so much. Hi, I'm Dick Stafford, and you're watching now Habersham. And today we have as a guest David Wall, who's the incumbent and a candidate for clerk of Superior Court of Habersham County. Welcome, David. Thank you. Thank you. Well, tell us a little bit about your formal education. And uh, even though you are an incumbent, uh, our audience might not know uh, about how you have been prepared to be the clerk for the Superior Court. Okay. I was born and raised here in Habersham County and product of the Habersham County School System. Uh, graduated in 1984 from Habersham Central. Um, I went on to Gumpton Jones College in Atlanta and uh, graduated from there in 1987. 1988, I was uh, licensed as a funeral director and embalmer and worked in private business and funeral service uh, since I was 15 years old, actually. Um, I was uh, county coroner uh, from January of 1993 until the end of 2004, because uh, January 1st of 2005, I, I took over as clerk of Superior Court after the uh, election in, in November of 04. And um, once I took office uh, in 05, I had by that time completed the uh, uh, training uh, for new clerks, which was in uh, November of 04. I started the uh, cert certified clerk of Superior Court training through the Carl Vinson Institute at that time. And uh, it's about 13 courses, uh, three, two, excuse me, two of which are electives. Um, and completed the uh, training. Typically that takes about four years uh, to complete that. You can uh, use those hours also as your continuing education um, credit hours. And um, I completed the certificate training uh, and became a certified clerk of Superior Court in 2008 through the Carl Vinson Institute. Mm -hmm. So, uh, David, tell me, uh, though you, you're an incumbent and you've been, uh, already been in this position, um, and it might not seem to some people like a, a more obvious leadership position in the county, nonetheless, you, you are a leader. And, uh, uh, and on that particular turf, you are the leader, you know, assigning court cases and keeping the schedule and all that sort of thing. So uh, what do you think, uh, what are some, some challenges in Habersham County, uh, first of all, as a resident, and, and second of all, uh, as the clerk? What, do you, what are some things we need to work on in our county? Well, uh, many things uh, in the clerk's office is, I think, misunderstood by some people. Uh, I think there needs to be, I guess, a little more education of the public on what the clerk's office actually does and the functions of it. Uh, most people associate jury duty uh, with the clerk's office because that affects a lot of people and, and they uh, are most familiar with that. Uh, of course, we have civil cases and, and criminal cases with Superior Court. And here in Habersham, we also have state court and magistrate court um, come under the, the clerk functions of those courts, come under clerk of superior court. Um, unless someone has had a case and, and had experience, um, you know, they're just not that familiar with those areas. In Georgia, the clerk of superior court is also the custodian of vital records, or excuse me, not vital records, but real and personal property records. Um, and those uh, affect everyone who owns property, uh, all those who have mortgages, uh, plats, any kind of lien that might fi be filed against a person um, that affects property and th which also affects uh, their abilities to obtain loans or sell their property. Uh, many times people, and probably one of the biggest challenges uh, with overall the clerk of Superior Court's office is people that come to the office that have a need that we are prohibited from law from being able to help them with. Um, we cannot uh, practice law uh, without a license and even if a uh, clerk of court is a lawyer they still cannot practice law 
under their official duties as clerk of court. Uh, those, uh, in that respect, it's actually uh, a protection for that person as well as protection for the county because if you start giving legal advice or practicing uh, law, even if you are a licensed attorney, um, you could become very easily a party to and stand liable for anything that would be associated in, in the matter. David, anybody who's gone to the clerk's office to look at uh, plats and try to figure out who owns a piece of land or where a particular land is or the size of the land, the second you walk into that office and see all those gigantic <laughs> books, you kind of go, there's no way I would even know where to start. So let me ask you a question. Is the nature of keeping plants and information about the ownership of land changing technically with technology? And if so, how? Oh, yes. Uh, that has changed dramatically over uh, especially the last uh, probably 10 years. Uh, years ago, everything was the big books, uh, placed in the big books you mentioned. Uh, today, we are no longer printing those books. Uh, we've moved into uh, digital imaging, and they're available uh, in date ranges. Uh, back right now to 1992, the, a few years ago when the economy uh, took a hit and funding was not available through the Clerk of Superior Courts Cooperative Authority, they had to suspend the historical re-indexing project which uh, allowed us to be able to go back further and further to uh, digitize records to make more available uh, electronically. Uh, that has been opened back up now. However, we have been working in-house as time allows and, and funding is available that we can digitize records and go back uh, as far as, as we possibly can. Many of the very old records um, have become, uh, the books are deteriorating uh, and the information's got to be preserved or, or we're going to lose it. Uh, but we are working on uh, moving back with that. All of the plats are already uh, imaged. We are right now working on, we've almost got all the imaging done. Uh, about 50 years back now, so we're starting to work on the indexing of those, where that someone can go in and check the index and then find the book and page uh, that it would be referenced to. Uh, uh, thinking uh, a little bit uh, outside of your, the world of a clerk of superior court, uh, let me ask you, thinking of either volunteers, hobbies, outside activities, things that you do to enjoy yourself, so that uh, not everyone in Habersham County, particularly put new people who may have just moved or may not be familiar with you and, and your work history with the county. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself personally so we can get to know you a little bit better. I, as I mentioned, I have uh, uh, been in Habersham County all my life. Uh, a lot of my interests uh, have been in public service. I've been in uh, uh, Cornelia Kiwanis Club for more than 20 years, I think about 24 years, 23 years now. Uh, I have been uh, a Mason and involved in Masonry uh, since 1986. Uh, I'm a Scottish Rite Mason and Shriner. Uh, uh, used to make a lot of the trips uh, with the hospital van from Atlanta to Cincinnati, Ohio uh, to the uh, Shriner's Children's Burn Hospital. And of course we have a crippled children's hospital over in Greenville as well. Um, I have been involved in the uh, local area with the Northeast Georgia Antique Auto Region, have an interest in antique autos and, uh, and hobby with that. And we host a uh, antique car show every August up at the county fairgrounds. And the profits that we uh, raise from that, we donate those to uh, things like scholarships at North Georgia Technical College. Uh, we donate money to the soup kitchens in, in uh, Clarksville and Cornelia. Uh, we have donated to Relay for Life uh, for several years now, and, uh, and we have to DFACS and several other organizations as, as our funds allow. Can you think of a specific goal 
you would have uh, if you were reelected for uh, your job, your position as clerk, or is there something you'd like to improve on or change or make better? Oh yes, There's, uh, we live in an ever-changing world and uh, of course we see changes every year with the uh, legislature and that sort of thing, but over and above that, um, this imaging projects that we have going on at the office, I would love to be able to see uh, those things completed. Um, I have been involved with e-filing uh, where attorneys may uh, file their documents from their office electronically. Um, we have civil case e-filing is in place and we're accepting uh, universal uh, commercial code financing statements that way. We are uh, already accepting um, e-filing of deeds uh, that is going on also now in Platts. Uh, we are hopefully going to be able to, by fall, uh, start accepting e-filing of criminal cases. And I'd like to be able to continue uh, down that path. Uh, it is a lot less expense on the taxpayers to be able to do it this way. Uh, it is a lot less expensive uh, to be able to be more technical than it is to have, as you mentioned a few moments ago, the large books that we have. A lot of people don't realize probably what those books cost. Uh, they're a specialty item. Each one of those books are tremendously expensive. We no longer have to spend money on those, uh, those books. So we're trying to uh, work smarter and uh, Many times we uh, hear people use the phrase, work smarter, not harder. Uh, and, and in doing these things too, it makes things um, flow a little better and quicker. We don't have to expand employment, uh, though I, I would like to think that everyone had a job, but at the same time that's expensive too. And uh, I try to always keep the taxpayer in mind in all the decisions that we make, uh, but I'd like to be able to continue down the path of uh, expanding and, and being a little more technical with our records. We've been speaking with David Wall, incumbent uh, and candidate for the Clerk of Superior Court. Uh, good luck to you, David. All right. Thank you. We hope you've benefited from these interviews sponsored by Now Habersham. And we want to remind you, be sure to vote May 24th.